the single best, I still contend this and I will forever, the best DC television show ever is Peacemaker. And I say that as a fan of a lot of DC television, but Peacemaker is, I think, the best thing they've ever put on TV. I absolutely fell in love with this. And I was one of the guys who, when they said they're making a Peacemaker show, I said, why? What? What? I mean, don't get me wrong. The trailers for Suicide Squad look good. I like John Cena and comedic roles and everything, but this is a stupid idea. Making this show is a stupid idea. And then, if you really want it, if you really want it, it came on, and I was in love. I fell in love with this show. Loved it from episode one to the finale. It's fantastic. But we've been waiting a long time for news about season two. And, you know, a couple things got in the way. James Gunn becoming the head of DC, kind of, you know, threw a wrench in things a little bit. Had a little bit of a writer strike going on with through things that are wrenched a little bit. But still, this is a show that came out, I believe, seven years ago. I think Peacemaker 7 went. Yes, <laughs> Peacemaker Season 1 was seven years ago. At least that's how it felt like. But finally, officially, word has now come out. They are rolling on Season 2. This comes to us from the folks over at CBR who wrote, Created by James Gunn and based on the DC Comics character of the same name, Peacemaker premiered on Max, which was HBO Max at the time. In January of 2022, that's exactly what I said, seven years ago, the series drew high viewership and critical acclaim, which led to a second season getting announced the following month. Progress on the series has been fairly slow since, though, thanks in part to the WGA strike. However, James Gunn revealed in an Instagram comment to a fan asking for season two that he is, quote unquote, this is James Gunn saying it, I'm writing it now. So Peacemaker season two is finally at least in the script writing phase. Now, I don't know how much time James Gunn is going to have to work on it. He's got a little movie called Superman, which is going to be rolling into production here soon. I'm sure he's already hard at work on pre-production. So, I mean, it sucks to say it, but, you know, it came out in January of 2022. So a year and a half ago. I don't think we're going to get a Peacemaker season two until maybe mid 2025. Like, I think it could be like three years in between seasons. And I, I think that sucks. I really do. I really think that sucks. So I am part super excited because I absolutely love this show. I, I just think it's fantastic. And you know, one of the big questions a lot of people are going to have about Peacemaker moving forward is how does it fit in to the new DCU? And I don't know the answer to that. But what I've always said is this. If you really watch, really, really watch uh, Peacemaker really, Season really 1. <laughs> couldn't resist. <laughs> season 1, if you literally just take out that final little cameo scene in the final episode, the fuck you, Barry, scene with Jason Momoa and Ezra Miller there, you take that one quick cameo out, this... Peacemaker series was in almost no way attached to the DCEU, really, in a practical way. There, I've always said from the beginning, you have to just do very, very minor retcons to take Peacemaker as it is and just drop it into the new DCU and just have to retcon a few very, very minor parts. It's not like, say, Wonder Woman, who literally interacted with every member of the Justice League and popped up in almost all the movies. and all. It's, it's a different thing, right? You can say, oh, when Peacemaker said this in the first season, he was actually referring to something else, you know? So it's not a hard thing to do. I'm not so concerned about that. I am more concerned about he's only writing it now. He can't write very much because he's got to be focused on Superman. I think it's going to be a while till we see it. Guys, we want to thank a sponsor of this video, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Kickstart a fresh fall routine with HelloFresh. HelloFresh handles all the meal planning and shopping to deliver everything you need to cook up a tasty meal right at home. They do the hard part and you get to take the credit. HelloFresh takes the stress out of mealtime by delivering fresh ingredients and easy recipes 
recipes right to your door. So this fall, skip that extra trip to the grocery store and have dinner ready in no time with America's number one meal kit. Like we've mentioned before, Ann and I are both working professionals and meal time is sometimes a bit stressful. That's why we absolutely love HelloFresh. It's nutritious, it's delicious, and we actually have a really good time making dinner together. So guys, Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50Campia and use the code 50Campia for 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50Campia and use the code 50Campia for 50% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Anyway, Chris, I'm still happy that they're writing it. What are your thoughts on Peacemaker and them finally getting around to developing season two? I love Peacemaker so much. And so did so many other people. This was the most popular show in January of 2022. It was the number one show in the world for a while, yeah. Perry Analytics said, and this is some Taylor Gonzalez math, it was 69.5% more popular (laughs) than other shows. And that was including The Witcher. That was including Book of Boba Fett, which obviously those things panned out (laughs) the way they did. But this was such a hot in-demand show that I don't think anyone really saw coming it being this successful. Oh, no. I still remember when they put out the first clip. I think the first clip they released was when Peacemaker goes into the diner and sits down with the rest of the group. And he's talking about how he's got his eagle in the car. And I thought... This looks like it was shot on an iPhone Mm -hmm. and nothing about this feels funny. Like I was so crapping on this show before it came out. I was so confused why it was happening because I I also didn't love Suicide Squad as much as you did. Right. And so it was, we're getting a spinoff of that movie? Okay. All right. I guess we'll see what happens. And it's so funny and so good and also heartfelt and and profound in so many ways too, which I did not see that coming either. It's wild to me though the idea of a show being that successful and pen not being taken to paper metaphorically until this moment and literally yes <laughs> yeah um and i understand a lot of that has to do with the strike and with james having a lot more on his plate and things like that but i feel like it wasn't today's the day huh? all right page <laughs> one scene one exterior shot of trailer i don't think it's that i think that james gunn probably had something a little more planned for what he's doing here but I do worry about everything that's on his plate. Yeah. If he's writing this, if he's doing Superman, if he's gonna be directing that, if he's charting the course of the DCU, that's a lot of spinning plates. And I know he's obviously not alone in this. He's got Peter Safran, he's got the other writers, directors, crew members he's gonna bring on board. But I just don't wanna lose any of the quality of that magical first season. Cause it was so, it was, it was lightning in a bottle. And I know that's already hard enough to recreate, to have a strong sophomore season. With all these other things he's got to do, I'm a little worried about him starting on it now. You know what one of my favorite scenes in the entire first season was? Vigilante in prison. So good. That whole oh. thing was so great. I love Now, here's, of course, the big question, though. You're David Zaslav, all right? Oh, no. And you're going into Peacemaker season two. I can't even play saxophone. And James Gunn comes to you and says, what do we do with the opening credits this year? Do we keep the same song with the new cast of characters or do we replace the song and do some other choreographed thing? Oh, what do you man. do? So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie to you. In, philosophically, I think you change the song. He's already got a song ready. <laughs> yeah, Zaslav's got his thing ready. He's like, hey, man, I got this all written. I can do it. <laughs> Zax is Zaslav. <laughs> I, on the other hand, at the same time, my heart will smile greatly if I sit down, press play on Max, and I hear, if you really want, like, I'm, it's just going to, you know what it's like? It's like the second episode of House of the Dragon, because they didn't do it on the first episode, but the second episode of House of the Dragon, they played the iconic Game of Thrones music. Bah, bah, and it's yeah. like, oh, I just felt like I was back. I So I don't know, what do you do? I it? want that song. I Me want too. that. I mean, especially as, as an anime fan, right? Almost every season you get a new song. And sometimes it comes before the new season and it throws you off where you're like, what the hell is this? How dare you? One Piece comes to mind. When they stopped doing the come aboard and bring along, I was furious. <laughs> it was very mad. I loved that. Um, and so I really want them to stick with this and then just keep building on the weirdness of that choreography with new people. I want, I want some more lifts in it. I want some spans. <laughs> Let's go. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called The John Campy Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.